Ta'awa'ila, a ta'awa'ila, e ohenala, a pita ko'alu ala, poop to a low eat the to'a to'ila, marli pa'a pa'ala e. Ta'awa'ila, a ta'awa'ila, e ohenala, a pita ko'alu ala, poop to a low eat the to'a to'ila, marli pa'a pa'ala e. Awe, ta'u ala, awe, ta'u ala, ta'u ala. Aloha. What's up, everybody? Welcome to Dulce America. My name is Bing Futch. Thanks indeed for joining me for our final week of far flung February. Wow, we have been everywhere, man. Korea, Czechoslovakia, Japan, and now we're bringing it home to my home country, the United States of America, where we're going to the island of Hawaii. Where currently the Big Island is blowing a lot of steam, ash, and lava from the big volcano there. Hawaii is a magical place, and if you've never been, I hope you get a chance to visit there sometime. Many islands in the world, but nothing like the collection of islands that we know as Hawaii. And this piece of music has got a really interesting history. It's called the Hawaiian War Chant. And most of you have probably encountered it just like I sang it, which is a little bit upbeat, up-tempo, uh, lots of chanting and tiki's involved. In fact, if you're a big fan of Walt Disney's The Enchanted Tiki Room, you know that this song figures prominently in the attraction towards the end with tiki gods and idols and things going on. You've probably heard the Spike Jones version from the 40s with all kinds of nutty sound effects. You've probably seen Donnie and Marie perform it on a beach in a song like, in a movie like Going Coconuts or something like that. But the Hawaiian war chant, first and foremost, is not a war song, nor is it a chant, really. It is actually a love song, and it is supposed to be a song sung between two lovers. I believe the original title is In the Spray is the name of the tune, the sea spray, basically. And it's meant to be played a lot slower and mellow. And to give credit to Disney, when you first hear this tune in the Enchanted Tiki Room, they do play it in the original form, which is nice, slow, and mellow. It was Spike Jones and his City Slickers that sped it up and made it a wacky Hawaiian song, and now everybody likes to play it at ludicrous speed. But it's really fun, and it's a fun little bit of flat picking as well. We're not gonna play it fast. We are gonna play it nice and slow and luxurious. And I'll give you some tips on how to play the second section of it, which is really the opposite of the first section. Not as busy at all. Nice, big, wide open, sustained chords. So let's go ahead and get the music downloaded for you right here. You can go to my Patreon open house and download the music for the Hawaiian War Chant, which I put together last night. I have never even tried to play this song instrumentally, but I thought it would be kind of cool to end uh, things with this. It's a fun little tune. So download, and while you're downloading, go ahead and bookmark that page. That's my Patreon site, and you'll notice below where you can download the tab, it says Open House, those little tags down there. Go back and click on that Open House tag, and you'll be led to a number of free posts where you can download a lot of different types of music and recordings. Think about doing that, and if you like what you see in here, and if you're a mountain dulcimer, ukulele, or Native American flute player, or you want to learn more about music history, music theory, and also music production and performance, you can always sign up for $5 a month and become a patron, and you'll get the keys to the kingdom. Everything I've ever produced, all my books, CDs, tablature, and video productions are all yours. Terabytes of information, just for $5 a month, it gets you everything. So please do think about becoming a patron, but try before you buy. Go on over there and download a lot of free music. All right. So if you download this, let's go ahead and take a look at the particulars. We're in D-A-D tuning. We are playing in the key of D major. Two sharps on the staff, F sharp and C sharp. And we have uh, repeat symbols at the very beginning of the piece. So let's look for those at the end of a measure. That's measure eight. So we've got eight bars. We're going to repeat those eight bars. Play it through once and then play it through again. That takes us to the chorus. And you can see how the chorus is like, it's like a wide open beach, isn't it? You start off and it's nothing but notes and then it just kind of clears out. Gives you an idea of the night and day of this piece. So we get into the next section, you'll see that there are no repeat symbols. It just goes through this section one time. But in effect, if you look at it, it's the same length as our A part. 
but we are going to be uh, moving not as fast, basically. Same tempo, just not as many notes. Now you'll see in measure 12, I've got a one and a half fret there. You do not need the one and a half fret to play this tune, but it really sounds cool to throw that C in there at measure 12. You'll see what I'm talking about when we get there. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the notes themselves and what we're going to be doing. This is largely a flat picking piece until we get to the chorus. And you can do it by playing some simple chords, and I'll show you that. But what I wanted to put out there on the music was pure melody. And then I put the chord symbols above, and we'll talk about how to put those chords in. Let's go ahead and get this melody together. You'll notice that in measure one, measure three, measure five, that there is nothing happening on the downbeat. So it's one, da ba da ba da ba da. We'll start off straight eights. We're going to end up swinging those eights, but let's play it straight for now. Let's take this first chunk here, starting off with two one. You're probably going to want to use multiple fingers. So we'll go one. Okay, that's the first part of the phrase. Obviously, this is a two measure phrase. But let's go ahead and just look at that first measure again. One. Okay, let's do it two more times. One. And one more time. One. Okay, now let's look at measure two. Let's go ahead and play measure one and then lean into measure two so we can keep everything in context. One. Okay, now you can see why we wanted to separate this. Let's go ahead and do it again. One. If you do it nice and slow like this, you're developing your muscle memory from the get-go. So just make sure you take your time with it, get good finger placement, and you'll be running in no time. Here we go. One. Measure three, one. Good, that's the first four measures. That's halfway through the A part. Let's do that again. The first four measures, one. One. Okay, now we are going to repeat measures one through four over and over again, one. So let me give you a measure in and then one. One, two, three, four, one. Notice I am using alternating pick direction. That is all, going to be the only way to make it through this piece alive. If you, if you try and outstrum this at speed, you're going to seize up. <laughs> all right, measure five. But measure five, a little bit different now. One. Let's go ahead and take that as a chunk all together, okay? One. Now we're going to repeat that over and over again. One. Okay, and finally, we're going to add in this last little bit. So 
So let's do measures five and five through eight. Measures five through eight together. One, two, three, four, one. Again, one. Again, one. One more time, one. All right, that's the hard part. That's what's it's done. Get that muscle memory. Keep doing it that slow over and over and over again until you feel comfortable, until you've internalized it, which means you've memorized it, and then you can concentrate more on playing and smoothing things out. Now let's go measure nine through 16. There's no need to like take this up and break it off into chunks. It's super simple. This is the awe ta hu Allah. Awe ta hu Allah. So we're just gonna go. And then at the end of measure 12, lay on that C on the one and a half fret middle string to get a little D7 tension before we swing over to the G measure 13. And that's it. So the whole thing together. Um, let's talk about the chords for the A part now. Starting off with D, we can just do it against the drone. So if you're flat picking, you don't want to be hitting the drone the whole time. So what I've been doing is... And then with A, get your 101 and index finger on the bass string, ring finger on the melody string, thumb can jump into the middle here like this. So our melody is on the middle string. Thumb comes in. That finger's already covering the one on the melody string. And then you can let it go. And then let go. And then. And that is it, in a nutshell, or a coconut shell. <laughs> in any case, um, you have your A part, you have your B part, that's the Hawaiian war chant. And if you don't do anything else but just pick the melody and have somebody else play the chords, even if you do it at a moderate speed, nice and mellow, mid-tempo, it's still really cool because so many people know this melody, they know the tune. To kick it up a notch, you'd have to learn to sing it <laughs> in Hawaiian. And I can tell you that that's not easy. I had to phonetically go and listen to a recording and just get into it. I passed it by a good friend of mine, Pat Carvalho, the big kahuna over at uh, Disney's Polynesian Resort. And I said, Pat, what do you think? And he went, it's okay, brother, which in Hawaiian means excellent. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for this wonderful month of far-flung February. Hope you had a great time. I have no idea what's going on in March except for the fact that we are heading off for the Castaway Music Cruise at the very beginning. So, next episode might be coming to you from somewhere out there in the water. Until then, everybody, play a little bit every day, and thank you so much for taking the time to share with me. We'll see you next time.